very special guest this time is Baye McNeil. You may think his name is Babe McNeil if you've seen it in the newspaper. I guess you get that a lot, right? I do get it a lot. Because you are a columnist for the Japan Times, right? That I am. And you have a monthly column? I do. And your column is titled what? Black Eye. Black Eye. I want to find out more about that. You're also a book author of a book titled... Hi, my name is Loco, and I'm a racist. That's correct. And Loco in Yokohama. And I understand you're also a lecturer. I am. I do some lecturing at Waseda University and Jose University. And what do you lecture about? I lecture about um, half issues in Japan, race issues in Japan, and that kind of thing. All right, we want to get into that. By the way, we're meeting at the Pink Cow. You come here often, right? I do. I love their burritos. It's perfect. I love them. We're going to have one before this interview is finished. Excellent. Burritos at the Pink Cow, that's the thing to try, right? Yeah. All right, bye. What kind of topics do you write about in your column? Um, Specifically, I write about the black experience in Japan. I try to find people of interest here in Japan of African descent, and I tell their stories from their perspective. Recently, you wrote about a couple of friends, the Whitakers. That's right. Latonya and David. Tell us a little bit about them. Why did you decide to write about them? Well, they're doing something that's uh, extremely rare here in Japan and um, for African-Americans who have um, immigrated here. And what they're doing is they opened up a restaurant here. And I wanted to get the the background on how that how they were able to pull that off because that's hell of a that's hell of a coup. Yes, it is <laughs> for any for people of any color or any nationality. And they were able to do it. and They did it very, you know. And the food is extremely great. So I wanted to get the background of, you know, where they came from and how they were able to get into this business. What kind of food do they make? Soul food. Soul actually, food. Actually, name of the place is Soul Food House. And where is it located? It's located in Azabu Juba. It's right across the street from the Peacock Supermarket, right? Exactly. All right. And she does make some killer gumbo, doesn't she? Oh, it's off the charts. Off the charts. And the ribs are fantastic. Fantastic. And the catfish, that's my favorite. The catfish and the cornbread. uh, And the macaroni and cheese is to die for. All right. Soul food in Tokyo. You also wrote about another couple who are doing something interesting here. That's right. Uh, Henry and Sasha Seals. And they opened up a... I guess you call it a bakery, and it's called the Yum Cup Cakery, and um, they've made some awful, awesome products. I've eaten several of their, some of their products, and it's really great. And really where great. are they located? Actually, I think the the bakery is out of their home, oh. so they built a second kitchen, especially for this. Okay. Yeah, they've been doing this for. I think they, I think they launched in August mm-hmm. of 2015. So. And to this to date, they've been having extreme success. Uh-huh. I think they just got a contract with uh, Sega Fredo. The, wow, the con- that's big. Yeah. So they'll be distributed nationwide. I believe so. Because Sega Fredo has uh, they have stores all over Japan. They do. They yeah. do. The Italian Cafe Company. Yeah. Do you think Black Americans here in Japan have a more difficult time than other foreigners, or do they get a fair shake? Um, I think they get a fair shake, but at the same time, I do think it's more difficult because uh, I think Japanese are less familiar with people of African descent than they are with people of Caucasian or European descent because, um, you know, there's just not as much information about us as there ought to be. So that's part of the reason why I started writing for Japan Times, to just increase the amount of information about what we're doing here and why we've come here. And again, your column is called Black Eye. Black Eye. Can we find that online? Yes, you can. Just go to Japan Times website and look up by McNeil or look up to Black Eye and you'll come across all the articles I've written. I think I started, I, my first article was in 2014 in August or September, so... Check so you've been doing this for a while. Been doing it for a while now, yeah. yeah. What's your background in writing? I used to write for a newspaper in New York before I came to Japan. It was a local paper in Bethesda, Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. I focused primarily on issues surrounding gentrification that was going on in the community at that time. Uh, when I first came to Japan, I started a couple of blogs. One was focused primarily primarily on uh, Obama's ascent to the presidential position. And the second was called Loco in Yokohama. And that f- primarily I talked about, wrote about um, the experience of black people living here in Japan, particularly my own, <laughs> and um, some of the things that I encountered, the challenges and the rewards of living here in this country. So, By the way, Baye McNeil 
is your name. Yes. And I'm sure, as I mentioned, some people might think it's Bay McNeil, but it's spelled B-A-Y-E. Yes. And what is, is that an African name? It is. It is an African name. I am... When I was a child, we had to all take African names as part of my education. And that's the name I took on. It's a Senegalese name, and it means straightforward. And that's you. That's me. That's what you do. <laughs> that's what you write about. I, I, I try to live up to my name. <laughs> yeah, you certainly do. But the Irish name on the end, McNeil, you don't look like a McNeil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm sure anyone who's familiar with the history of America knows why African Americans have these European names. But I'm not going to get into that right now. All right. But <laughs> when you write, how do you do your research or what do you do for research? Well, for the article that I write for Japan Times, I'm mostly interviewing uh -huh. and I get the people's, I get directly from the people who are, you know, the source. <laughs> And then you record the interviews? I record the interviews. And do you create a podcast as a result of your interviews? Not yet, but um, in the future, I'm thinking about starting a podcast in early two 2016. So. That would be fantastic. I, I'm working on it. Do you, you have know. a name for it yet? Uh, Zen Zen. Zen Zen. <laughs> Please explain to our listeners what Zen Zen means in Japanese. Zen Zen means absolutely, or in this case, or, or it can mean absolutely not. You know, it depends on uh, the circumstance, but yes. Do you find that there's any racial discrimination for foreigners in Japan? Um, well, if you read the media, if you listen to people talking about their experience in Japan, you hear a lot of uh, job discrimination, housing discrimination that takes place in Japan. So that's, for the most part, that's where you'll find it. My personal experience? Yes. I, I haven't personally experienced any housing or job discrimination. The only kind of experience discrimination that I would say I experience on a regular basis would be the kind that is on a person-to-person -person level as, for example, you know, people avoiding you or evading being around you or treating you differently based on the, um, based on the fact that you're not Japanese, that kind of thing. By the way, you mentioned that you're from New York. Is I that am. right? We're about in New York? Brooklyn, New York. All right. A lot of people from Brooklyn listening right now. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all of our listeners in Brooklyn. Big up to Bed-Stuy, Crown Heights. Do you feel safe here in Japan? My personal safety? Yes. Yeah, no, I don't feel any threats to my personal safety here in Japan. It's a very safe country. No, notoriously safe country. You don't fear guns? Anything like that? Terrorists? Uh, the, the big things that are happening back in the USA that everybody's afraid of right now. No, I, I didn't feel, af I don't feel afraid of any uh, terrorist attacks or gun violence. You know, it's just something that, that you're not going to encounter here in Japan for the most part, as of yet. You know, as the 2020 Olympics approaches, who knows, that might change, that can change overnight. So, but right now, no, I'm not concerned about that at all. Do you feel safe walking on the street late at night, maybe even down a dark street here in Japan? Oh, yeah, absolutely safe. Yeah? No concern whatsoever. Would you feel safe in New York? Yes, absolutely you, you safe in New York, yeah. yeah. You don't fear guns in New York or violence or... I, 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 reckon, I realize that it exists mm -hmm. and is out there, but I know I've, growing up as a New Yorker, you learn to just uh, accept that as part of the environment, and there's no sense in walking around in fear of it wherever you go. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, mm -hmm. and uh, just be alert, but not afraid, you know what I mean? So I was, I was you know, trained by nature to be alert to what's happening around me, but not to be afraid of it. So no, I don't walk around in fear in New York or in Japan. <laughs> What are some of the benefits of living in Japan? Ah, some of the benefits. Food is great. <laughs> but you're eating burritos today. Yeah, but... Uh, even, yeah. The, <laughs> even, even the burritos are good here. Even the burritos yeah. are good. You know, if you can find the right places to, to the right eateries, you can find some really good stuff here. Are you a fan of Japanese food? I am. Yeah. I do love Japanese food. Oh, for example, what kind of foods do you like? Uh, I love okonomiyaki. And That's love the Osaka yakisoba dish. Yakisoba. Yeah. Yakisoba. Okay. Yeah, yakitori. And These are all the things that will expand your belt, right? <laughs> but you're yeah. looking pretty good. Are well, you, you're, you're I've staying been dieting of, of late, so you know I've gotten down to a, a, a pretty decent weight. I'm still working on that, but um, now the holiday season's here, I might... <laughs> Might put on a few inches, that's for sure. Other Japanese foods that you like? Are you into sushi? Are you okay with that? Yeah, I love some sushi. But, yeah. um, you know, once you get a taste of some really good sushi, it's hard to go back to the 
to the the hutsu. That's for <laughs> sushi. sure. And the hamburgers over here are getting better. They are getting better. They are getting better. I, I love to go to um, what's my favorite spot over there? The Hawaiian burger, Kua Aina. Kua Aina. Uh, I yeah, love me Kua some Kua Aina. Aina burgers with the pineapple on. I don't on the do the pineapple uh, ones, but uh, they do have some really good burgers there. Have you ever tried Teddy's Bigger Burger? I have not. In Harajuku, you know where Condomania is. I do. About two minutes from Condomania, walking in the direction of Shibuya, there's a little side street that comes out. Right. Just next to the side street, on the second floor, Teddy's Bigger Burger. That's your recommendation. Absolutely. Okay. You got to try that. <laughs> Will do. There are some people listening to our interview right now outside of Japan who might be thinking about moving to Japan. Do you have any suggestions for them? If you're thinking about moving to Japan, I would recommend that you study the language. Uh-huh. Because it will, I mean, of course, if you're, if you're in a larger city like Yokohama or Tokyo, you know, maybe you can get by without learning the language. But um, for the most part, the language is essential for building relationships and for getting ahead and getting into other opportunities outside of, let's say, teaching English and that kind of thing. I mean, if you want to, if you want to get some, if you want to increase the amount of opportunities you're going to have in Japan, study the language. And did you study Japanese? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where did you study? Uh, on my own. Yeah, on no, my own. No, no classes, no No school. classes, no yeah. lessons, nothing? Just everyday life, daily life, you can pick it up. I mean, it's been slow. You know, for a while, I I didn't study at all. I didn't practice at all. But of late, last couple of years, I've been increasing the amount of uh, Japanese that I use and the amount of people I interact with, Japanese people. So. And when you give your lectures at the university, are they in English or Japanese? It's a combination of both, but primarily English. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm increasing the amount of Japanese I use in the lectures. I like to get to a point where I can conduct an entire lecture in English, I mean in Japanese, but I haven't gotten there yet. What about books or newspapers? Can you read books and newspapers in Japanese? I can Japanese? read manga. I can't read oh. a book or newspaper yet, but I can read the manga if they have some of the katakana to uh, hiragana to explain some of the kanji, because I can't read all the kanji. I can read maybe five or six hundred characters, but I can't read an entire newspaper at all. What about the tattoos and the t-shirts? Can you read those? Yeah, I can read some of them, <laughs> but uh, not well. I can read all the train stations, that kind of stuff, and names. When you're traveling here in Japan, what's your main method to get around? Mostly train or bicycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bike a lot. Bicycle friendly here, would you say? Oh, oh, that's a strong one. No, not friendly. But <laughs> not friendly. <laughs> not friendly, because a lot of times you find yourself on the sidewalk and then you're, you know struggling to get through people or if you're in the street the, the biking lanes are very tight and very close to the curb and easy to get a flat or bang against the curb easily so uh, yeah you, sometimes it's a little tight it depends on where you're at like in Yokohama a lot of the streets are tighter than they are here in Tokyo so do you belong to any bicycle clubs you know no. our friend Don Morton has a bicycle club oh really film critic movie reviewer for this show he has uh, a bicycle club and they go out every Saturday and Sunday and they bike around Japan. Really? That sounds fascinating. I would like to get into something like that, but um, as of yet, not. The name of his bicycling club is called Half-Assed Cycling. (laughs) Cycling sounds perfect for me. (laughs) Half-Fast Cyclers. (laughs) Not (laughs) half-assed, but that's okay. They have a lot of fun. Okay. They go out every weekend, as I mentioned, and after the ride, they stop and have some beer. Wow. And they have parties from time to time. And then they, they're they finished by cycling for the day, I hope. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it <laughs> okay. after the beer. Getting back to the African-American experience here in Japan, if someone is an African from Mexico, would he still be called an African-American? Or an African <laughs> from Canada, would he be called an Afro-Canadian? I, th- I think you have to ask those Mexicans and those Canadians who are, you know... It, when that's the, that's the case for them, because um, I, I'm a big believer in self-identification. Mm-hmm. You know, and however you self-identify, it's up to you. Oh. You know, I mean, uh, I'm not big on the African American title, personally. You know, just I mean, American. I just, yeah, I'm just American. Right? Yeah. You know, just a human. Uh, that's you know, good for enough. the most part. So I think since that's one thing that I've learned since living in Japan. One thing that I've embraced is that, you know, I think it's more important to be a man or to be a human than it is to, to identify with these nationalities and these cultural identifications. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, 
I think that's part of the problem with the discrimination. I think that is that there's so much differentiation between cultures, and that causes a lot of these misunderstandings mm. and miscommunication. So we have some African Americans here in Japan who are doing very well in the world of show business, right? Um, yeah, there's there's several. Yeah, Olagul. Olagul. He's yeah. on TV all the time. There yeah. was even a Halloween mask of him. Did you see the Halloween mask? I have not, no. and I cringed. <laughs> I cringed to see it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was not complimentary. I should okay. say that there were several people wearing it on the street in Roppongi. Then, of course, we have the guy who does the um, Enka singing. Ah, uh, J- J- Lo. J Lo. J Lo. Yeah. Yeah, there's so there's there's Chris separate. Hart. Chris Hart Chris is doing Hart. extremely well. Yeah, Dan Smith is doing great in the world of TV. Oh yeah, Dan's a great guy. I interviewed him a few weeks ago, I mean, a few months ago. And, yeah. and what was the topic with Dan? What was he doing at Fox? The kind of things that he's been able to accomplish since he's been here in Japan, and he's just been a, he's had a remarkable run of success since he's been here. So. He has. It's yeah. truly amazing. <laughs> he also was like the personal assistant to Michael Jackson whenever Michael Jackson came here to Japan. Dan's the man. Dan no is the doubt. man. He's getting around. <laughs> Let's switch to politics briefly. What do you think of Obama so far? Seven years into his presidency, how do you think President Obama is doing? Doing very well. You know, I think he's done exceptionally, you know, especially when, you know, if, if he only accomplished this one thing, which is a review of, of, of the prison industrial complex, mm-hmm. you know, and how is and, uh, um, how is impacted African-Americans. And he's di- he's directly addressed that. And that's significant. And I think that's if he only if that's the only accomplishment that he was able to do, that would have been enough. But. Um, he's done so much more, especially in regards to health care and in regards to getting the troops out of Iraq and working on getting them out of Afghanistan. And I don't know, I, I think he's done exceptional, especially in comparison to previous presidents. If you could give President Obama some advice, what would you advise him? I don't think I'm qualified to advise that man. Oh, come on, he's, buddy. He's on, he's You're he's the on straight talker here. Nother, come on, he's come on. on a whole nother level. I can't, sure he is, but I'm I, sure you could. You know, if you're seated with him having dinner, you know, he's in Hawaii right now. He's having a good time with his family. He likes to make surprise visits to McDonald's from time to time. <laughs> he likes to go to Alan Wong's restaurant from time to time. You could find yourself sitting right next to him. He might lean over to you and say, bye, how you doing? <laughs> glad glad we could find you here in uh, Hawaii. Thank you for coming over to our state for a visit. You got any advice for me? Uh, yeah, come hang out in Japan with me. <laughs> <laughs> that is good advice. That's yeah. excellent advice. I wouldn't presume to be in a position where I could give him advice because the thing the the things that he's dealing with are on such a level that, you know, we, we believe through that we get enough information through the media that we are qualified to get the president advice. But I, I think we only get probably at best 50 percent of the information that he has at his disposal and how and the information he uses, he bases on the basis for which he makes his decisions. <laughs> so. No, that's beyond me. (laughs) All right. Well, you've scooted out of this one. You've just escaped from answering that question. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. How do you think history will judge President Obama? I think it would judge him well. I think so. I think that anybody, I don't think he's damaged the opportunities for future presidents of African descent at all. If anything, he's, he's, he's shown that African Americans are capable of handling these responsibilities at the top level as well as anyone else of any other race so I think he's done wonderfully and I think people will acknowledge that as time moves on do you think his face will be added to Mount Rushmore yeah (laughs) I don't think any faces will be added to Mount Rushmore but if they were to add a face to Mount Rushmore he would be a good choice all right what do you think about Dr. Ben Carson I don't think about Dr. Ben Carson (laughs) why not no, I don't really think about him. I mean, I listen to a, I listen to him talk a couple of times, and sometimes he makes sense, but most of the time he doesn't. And I just moved on from there. You have no affinity for Doctor Ben Carson. Do None. you think he has a chance of becoming the next president? None at all. None. None at all. <laughs> what about Trump? Do you think Trump has a chance of becoming president? I'd like to think he doesn't. 
You know, I, I thought that he was a joke until recently. And what changed your mind? The amount of support he's getting. Uh-huh. Yeah, if he wasn't getting as much support as he was, I would, you know, definitely write him off like Carson. But he's getting a great deal of support. So... So you um, think he has a chance? No. no. I, well, I don't want to think he has a chance, but um, it's what's happening in the States is very spooky. And I think it's... Spooky in what way? Personally, I think that this is part of the Obama backlash I think as a result of his presidency, I think it's brought to light a lot of the racial uh, issues that America hasn't really been dealing with. And now they've been brought to light. They've been brought to the surface. And that kind of energy could propel someone like Trump to the presidency. Do you think he'll get the black vote? I don't know. Or the Spanish vote? I doubt it. I doubt it seriously. Wow, this is getting heavy. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're getting into it now. What about Cruz? I haven't been fo- actually. I haven't been following American politics okay. so closely. So, any thoughts about Hillary Clinton? She lost my vote back when she was running against Obama back in was that two thousand eight, two thousand seven, when she made that statement about him. Kennedy was assassinated, and it could happen to you know it happens. You know that kind of thing. Just kind of putting it out there that Obama might get assassinated. I was like this woman is dark there's something very very dark about her and it, after that it was no way i would vote for her just from that so do you have any favorite candidate no no do you still vote in the usa i voted for the last presidential election that was the last time i voted you're still a u.s citizen i am still a citizen what about japan are you a citizen here no i'm not a citizen all right bye mcneil Thank you for answering all of these questions and thank you for spending so much time with us here at the Pink Cow. You're welcome. Where we are about to enjoy one of those fantastic... Do you want the chicken or beef burrito? I think I'm going to go with the chicken. I'm going to go for the beef this time. Okay. Any closing thoughts? No, I just want to thank you for having me and uh, it's been a real pleasure talking to you and I hope we can do this again sometime soon. We will do that indeed. And folks, if you have any questions you'd like us to ask by next time, Why don't you just put those questions in the comments space below and we'll bring Baye back. We'll have him answer your questions. How's that? Sounds like a plan. All right. All right. Baye McNeil, thank you very much for joining us here on The Kong Show on the Japan Today website. Thank you. 